Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Review. So now we're going to talk about Powers of X issue 3, written, of course, by Jonathan Hickman with art by R.B. Silva. Now, when I reviewed the previous issue, Powers of 10, I said X again. I'm always going to do that. Powers of 10, issue 2, I said it felt like we were coming to the close of the first act of this 12 issue. Uh, run story arc that Hickman is presenting with us before he launches us into the six ongoing series and so I said that because it felt like issue four kind of wrapped up um, all the, the setup right all of the groundwork is laid and it felt like going forward we were going to start getting more action heavy stuff a lot of the questions that we have we're going to start getting answers there's going to be a lot of payoff and that is exactly what happens in this and I absolutely love it this is the first issue um, of either Hawks or Pox that feels like it answers more questions than it asks, but it is no less intriguing or interesting or dense than any of the any of the other issues thus far. It's incredible. Let's dive into it here. So first off, um, I like these all these quotes here on on the first pages of all these. Uh, love them. I am immortal and I have no end. Apocalypse. Of course you don't love it, right? So first page right out of the gate. First thing you notice is. What the hell is happening right here? What are you doing to a baby there, Hickman? But it gets even more interesting when we start reading it. It says, uh, X2, the X-Men year 100. So we're in that future timeline. The Temple of Concordance, the Church of Ascendancy. Now that's very key, right out of the gate. Very key, the Church of Ascendancy. So we learned last issue in the year 1000 timeline that they had created a world mind and were hoping to be absorbed by the phalanx to be to that the hive mind or the world mind that they were on would ascend. So we already have here 900 years prior, there is a religion, something going on, cult, whatever you want to call it, that is basically like worshiping machines and wanting to ascend. And I guess. That's what plays out for the next 900 years, right? He's um, this uh, priest, preacher, whatever you want to call him, says all humans are slaves. It's only when we embrace our fallen nature and accept their dominance that we can truly understand the message of our masters. Heal their wor- hear their words. Calm down, Loki, in Avengers. Calm down. We got it. And you can see here he's got um, a metal arm, bionic arm going on over here. Very, very uh, Terminator 2 type thing going on. Almost reminds me of the Reavers um, as well. T- you know, taking off pieces of their body and adding in uh, cybernetic enhancements, things like that. He says, you must reject your humanity. Every last shred of it. Most of all, you must reject the human heretics who believe that mankind can improve on our flawed design. Just insane stuff. And then they, like turn this baby's face into um uh, into into robotic cybernetic stuff almost again last issue um in the 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 uh, the the required reading in the background there said something about the techno organic virus which you're getting shades of here which just makes me want to go back and read uh some of cable's history like the adventures of cyclops and phoenix the mini series that dealt with uh cyclops and phoenix in the far future raising their son cable with the ascani son just so dense so good then the there's an explosion and who show up but this group of x-men looking so badass i can't get over how good the design is of of rasputin i love uh cardinal zorn's looking like a badass right here uh, he i love zorn he said you would think with my nihilist bent i would uh, have some uh, some affinity for human apocrypha but look at me on a suicide mission facing sweet oblivion sure of only one thing i had hoped for more for humanity a little more pride a little more grace uh and then rasputin's like and yet here they are in all their glory great great stuff now this page this gave me one of the biggest duh moments that i've had in a long time reading comics right so this page right here apocalypse and his four horsemen right wolverine and those other ones wolverine um zorn they're his they're his, they're his horsemen, the four horsemen of death, or the four horsemen of apocalypse. How did I not put that together before? We also get some answers here, right? So the horsemen of war is, of course, Wolverine, James Howlett. Um, he's a pureblood mutant. Death is Zorn, of course. He's Nihilus, like he just said. Um, mutant, pureblood. Then 
Pestilence is the one that we didn't know before. He is a mixture of Lorna Dane and Emma Frost. He is a second gen Chimera. So he's the one that looks like Magneto, which is, of course, perfect because he is a mix of Lorna Dane, who is uh, the daughter of Magneto. That's why he's green. Great stuff. Now, we haven't seen, I don't even think that character's spoken yet in any of the comics. Uh, any of the comics are shown any powers. I think he finally does later on in this issue. So just a complete complete mystery something we finally get answered like i said off the top more answers than questions in this one then we get famine which is the, the Krokoa uh cypher uh, uh symbiote um whatever you want to call it that we learned about in a previous issue um then we got um the the uh, the Silabel, the um the, the others over here uh Silabel who died then Percival who also died who was Percival was Emmanuel Cortez a ghost so that reminds me of Fabian Cortez one of uh Magneto's acolytes from back in the 90s era I believe of comics they also got Rasputin and Cardinal uh, Cardinal here says it's uh Wagner Gray and Freeman I had to look up Freeman uh, the only thing I can come up with is that Freeman is Francis Freeman, and you know Francis from Deadpool. He is Ajax, deep cut character coming in here. Um, uh, Hickman is not afraid of the deep cut, clearly. And then also his uh, mother here, it says, uh, Akaba Mutant, poor, uh, pure blood. Now that may come in, uh, we may circle back to that at the end because that's very very interesting so now we go to uh nimrod and his alpha sentinel here and i just love this artwork so much and so she is standing at the window says the church of ascendancy is on fire and nimrod says and why should i care now i want to say something right here he, he says and why should i care i'm busy disassembling the variables of the recent incursion and can't be bothered with man and when he says man the way it's kind of written here instantly in my mind i read that in the voice of james spader doing ultron in avengers age of ultron and it just fits perfectly i don't know if you can conjure that up in your mind as you're reading this or reading future issues but it just seems to fit so so perfectly and then Nimrod continues here, dare I say let it burn? I think so, it's been far too long since we've seen uh, fire and ash of the humans. Okay, calm down there, Nimrod. Um, and then uh, basically she, um, they keep talking and Nimrod's like, why should I care, what's going on? And then the Alpha Sentinel's like, um, just kind of keeps staring at him like, we need to do something about this. And he's finally like, what? Why are you staring at me? And then she says, the inconsistency of action bothers me. We should investigate. And then total machine logic here. Nimrod responds, the inconsistency of their logic of action implies either a flawed nature, not unreasonable given the subjects we are talking about, or some other agenda not yet identified. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Either way, I won't be joining you. I care for neither. Then she flies off. Um, saying suit yourself and he's like I always do I don't know what you're talking about I love it so then we get um, Cardinal doing some uh, got his fencing sword uh, rapier I think is what uh, they're called someone who's no, no more knows more about swords can correct me on that and he is taking down the the priest there that was at the the church of ascendancy and he's like why are you doing this and I love this he says, I'm a pacifist who's been pushed to the brink, but even for those like me, there comes a time when a point must be made, which just reminds me of um, the line from Doctor Who, demons run when a good man goes to war. Just instantly that popped off the page of me. I love uh, that episode, and I love this comic so, so much. And then uh, he, uh, Cardinal's asking, you betray your own kind for what? Those, the favor of of those who find contempt in your very existence, then he responds, I do it for the great machine who is our, our better. I do it for my God. We turn the page and then he's like, see God, uh, see our God mutants. And it's the Sentinels have shown up looking very much like their Sentinels. Also a guy co-ad because sure, that's how comics work these days, right? And, and Zorn is like, finally, sweet annihilation. I've waited so long for this day to arrive. And then Rasputin's like, we need to hold them off, Zorn. We got to distract them. We have to buy enough time for the others. And we find our other heroes, um, including uh, Apocalypse over here. I wonder what 
quick thing about Apocalypse. Someone in the comments uh, from the last video said that they hate it when Apocalypse is referred to as a villain. They give a great explanation of how he is not all that different from Xavier and Magneto. He wants mutants to ascend and be at the at their rightful place. He just has a very different way of going about it. So in some ways I agree with that and I like that. And we see some of that characterization here as well. He just wants um, what he sees for the world and is not necessarily villainous. He's not a mustache twirling villain. He's kind of almost like Sinestro even over in the DC world. He just wants what's best for the world and he has a certain way of seeing how he wants to impose that and it's usually at odds with our heroes great great stuff i love this he's they're in this like giant server room uh repository for all of that the machine history and he says i am older than even the idea of machines and in that time uh, i have changed but the smell of thieves never has there is death here and then wolverine's like yeah, you haven't been uh, been here in a while. That's how the, how the whole planet smells now. <laughs> you guess he's been uh, up on Asteroid K, I think it was. A uh, little floating satellite there. Um, great stuff. Uh, then uh, the Krakoa um, cipher guy says, uh, Thanks to our earlier sacrifice, I know exactly uh, where to look in the archives to find out when Nimrod came online. So we remember last issue they were looking for, they went and stole, the, the or I think the first thing they went and stole where they got those two characters killed, Percival and uh, Silabel, I think were their names. Um, they were looking for basically the file directory of the information that they needed, and now they're stealing the information that they needed. Um, Nimrod gets an alert that someone's uh, breaking in, and he's like, oh, some other agenda indeed. Absolutely indeed. So they find what they're looking for. It's this very um, crystalline-like structure, very reminiscent of uh, uh Kryptonian crystals like in uh, Superman, especially the uh, old Christopher Reeve Superman movies. Um, then uh, Wolverine's like, oh no, I smell something. There's something not quite right. Then all of a sudden, boom, he gets uh, lit up by Nimrod. Um, and then Nimrod's like, interesting that I find you here. There's nothing located in this sector except old data and machine lore. I wonder, whatever were you looking for? And again, I just hear James Spader's voice in my head then we've got um rasputin cardinal's dead uh Ca and rasputin has you know looking over um zorn right here and that alpha sentinel's like i've just received word it seems nimrod was correct your allies have been uh, located and are being dealt with and then rasputin's like yeah well here's an inconvenience Zorn has a singularity in his head. If I remove his mask, then all of this will be gone in an instant, so I'm not going to tell you again. Stay back. And then Zorn is like, no, come closer. This is the ending I've always wanted. Love that. Then the Alpha Sentinel's like, a singularity? I don't think you'll do that. Kind of the classic villain of uh, telling the heroes, like, I don't think you'll make the bold choice and kill more people. And he's I don't think you'll do it, even when you have nothing to hold on to. Besides, do you have any idea what lies at the hole of a real black heart? I'll give you a hint. It's where we're headed. It's where we're all headed. And she's like, you know what? You're right. I don't know. Let's find out. And then rips his mask off and boom, black hole comes right out. Absolutely love that. She's just willing to, to pull that trigger for the greater good. One of the more interesting takes on a, a, a heroic sacrifice. Love it. Then, um, Apocalypse gives the the crystal to Wolverine and says, here, take this, you know what to do with it. And he's like, no. Wolverine's like, no, you go, I'll stay. And then Apocalypse is like, if you could see what you look like, you'd know how foolish that sounds. Go, I'll be right behind you. So Krakoa character opens up the portal. Apocalypse stays behind to fight the Nimrods. I love it. It's so good. Apocalypse versus Nimrod, 100 years in the future. It's so great. So Wolverine steps through, we can see him going through what looks like the Upside Down from Stranger Things. Making a lot of pop, pop culture references today, hope you guys enjoy that. Um, then just more fighting, oh, we finally get to figure out who's in the sarcophagus, and I think a commenter uh, guessed it last time we saw this. Um, we, he, uh, it's it's Moira. It is the Apocalypse Moira from, from one of her past lives and she's god i love that character design so much love them fighting over here um, um and then uh nimrod's giving 
uh, Apocalypse Watch 4, he says, um, Apocalypse, the mutant immortal, older than the world, the fittest of all. How sad this must be to know that natural selection has brought you here. Ooh, damn, laying it down, right? Wolverine's like, wake up, Moira, I have it. Apocalypse knew uh, we might be on a clock, so he created some kind of way to force feed the information you need into your mind, hold still, and then he basically, um, like, puts the the, um, the crystal in her chest and it just absorbs right into her, basically, like, uh, downloading all the information into her brain, Matrix style. Um, you guys hear they're making a Matrix 4? Crazy world we live in, right? Sequels and uh, uh, reboots, right? Whatever. Give me more Keanu Reeves, I'll be fine. And then he asks her, you got it? You got the information? She's like, yeah. What now? Then he says, if we succeeded, the old man said to send you on your way because there's nothing left here to save. I'm sorry. Then she says, it's okay. I have what I need now. And this, this is what you do because Wolverine is the best there is at what he does. And he straight up just runs her right through. And then the little caption down here in the bottom says, So ended the ninth life of Moira X. So this is the ninth life. We start the tenth one, which has been, I guess, the main timeline that we've been going through. I love this other quote here that's attributed to Apocalypse. And should forever end, let me die in battle surrounded by my fallen enemies with blood on my sword. Love it, love it so much. All right, and we go back to this uh, timeline chart that we've seen before, the ninth life of Moyer X. Year six, or uh, life six is still missing. I thought we might get a hint of that this issue, but no, no, we did not. And there's got to be some sort of, um, I just kind of, that we're, like these other ones are are black, are whited out, where those aren't important. So nine kind of comes down if I can get my, my reflection right down, I know here, but then 10 comes like up and over, right? So I wonder if there's some significance in that, like it's the one that made everything or goes behind everything or underpins everything, something like that. I don't know. We just have the same stuff here again. And the year uh, life nine is going and going and going all the way into the future there. And it says year 123, Moira dies after receiving Nimrod origin files and then um back in life 10 where we are now is year 52 house of x so that's our present day timeline guys it's so damn good it's so so amazing i absolutely love it um i feel like there was something else i was about to say and i just done plum forgot oh yeah the um the Nimrod origin files last issue. That's what um, we find out that Mystique and Toad and Sabretooth stole in the first uh, issue of uh, House of X. They found out about the space station and that's where Nimrod is. So clearly Moira has given them that information and that's where the House of X kind of started. And that's our main one where humans have, or mutants have, uh, created Krakakoa or Krakoa whatever uh, sorry and they have all the um the portals everywhere and they created those drugs and all that stuff we learned about just like five weeks ago that just seems long ago farther away than that because this just been so dense and digging through all this stuff that Jonathan Hickman has been putting in front of us so guys another amazing issue maybe a little bit less dense than some of the others but no less important uh some great answers to some great questions starting to all these loose threads that hickman has laid out in front of us starting to intertwine them and put together that main story thread um that whole like plot rope out of all of these uh threads that he's been laying down for us i love it i love it so much i cannot wait to read the issue next week house of x uh number three cannot wait to bring that to you guys so guys what did you think about this what revelations were the coolest to you what uh, what did i miss because i'm sure i missed something let me know all of that down in the comments down below thank you guys so much for watching if this is your first time here at the channel hit that subscribe button for me it would mean a lot and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop